fossil. These are the kind that I work with in my work. Is that cool? Put in your pocket. Something like a crinoid or something like that. Adam walking across the stones. I grew up hiking. Whoa, Adam! Whoa, whoa. For you guys. Adam made it out safe. He's safe. Right, Adam? Yeah. But look at his shoes. He got dirty. Oh, his whatever. <laughs> his shoes are dirty. <laughs> his shoes are dirty. are here. I have been a jeweler for 35 years. I have done big commercial lines to one of a kind museum pieces. I studied in art and I moved into silversmithing. So for me, the voice that I offer to you is multiple markets. I love studying markets, but this little section here is about being in the studio real life. I've been a jeweler and a mixed media artist, fiber artist. I studied fiber at the Art Institute of Chicago, Southern Illinois University. So everything I offer here is, um, you know, some of my runway work and my really big work uh, that I have done in my life. Um, has been in jewelry or adornment or wearables. My voice that you will hear from me is always about building exactly what is in your heart and what you need to build. It's about being authentic and really, you know, making sure that you put your voice out in the world. That's the only way to get your work known as an artist. If you really look at things, you guys, I wanna challenge you to look at things. Uh, look at artists who become well known where their work is well known. If you're an artist that wants your work and wants to put a mark in the world and have your work well known, it is super vital and important to be able to build from your heart and put your intentional and authentic work out there in the world. Does that make sense? So it's crazy enough. So today, today, what I wanna talk about here, you're gonna hear me talk about on and off, is my passion, and that is to really build your own direction. I wanna talk a lot about tools, keeping a simplistic metal smithing um, techniques. I wanna talk about people who do magnificent wor work in silversmithing all over the world, you know, and, and this applies to art too, all over the world. The simpler you keep it, the more you need to use your own authenticity, the more you need to bloom. So this is why it's important to use your own voice and your own work. So my history, I spent, you know, when you're looking to find your passion, which there is another film in here about finding your passion, so important to get to your passion. So when I come into my workspace, I'm thinking, okay, what direction do I wanna go? What, what do I wanna build? And usually like it's a couple month rollout. I, from studying at the fiber for so many years, it's like one of my passions, which is so impractical, it's fringe in my jewelry. I love putting wraps and fringe. So I just made all these little end caps this morning and came in, I'll show you how making an end cap you know, and put a little bit of uh, granulation around the side, but this really holds in my pieces. There's a couple different ways you can connect 
the fiber into your work. Now, are these super practical? Not really. Do they look cool as heck? Heck yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's like when I'm making decisions about putting fiber in my work, uh, I'm, I'm doing it for the love of it. The people, you know, I, I can tell you that I, I sell my work, you know, because I have a love and a passion for it. And like attracts like, as we know. So in talking about, um, a couple books that I want to suggest you guys. One, if you don't have Making Connections book, go ahead and get that because in there I'm really talking about building your own work. Also, uh, I have an intentional metalsmithing course coming up, but I'll talk about that later on. This actually is a book that I have to suggest. This was actually the first silversmithing book that I have ever, that I ever took a look at. And this is so inspiring because there's so many people who are intimidated to start silversmithing. And it can be the easiest and most fun process that you've ever done. As a teacher for 35 years, I feel like one of the things that my biggest role has been is actually to be a cheerleader to people who are in my course and really to try to teach the philosophy of soldering. There's a whole philosophy on soldering. And I actually have put together a little set of tools that's called the Nomadic Tool Set and a whole philosophy that goes with it. It's using a torch that is right here. Using this torch head. This is actually butane that you can find at uh, Walmart. You can find it at any hardware store. I teach this one here. This is the one I began with. This is from Euro Tool. It's a $20 torch head. And it's big, but you can you can control the size of your flame. Why do I use this? Because I love traveling, you know, but also uh, I do love traveling. I do love being able to do my work when I'm in another country. But everybody has the everybody has a Walmart now, so this is easy to find. But another reason why, you can this was the first time with this torch head and this gas that um, we were able to bring silversmithing to the tabletop in our kitchen, the kitchen tabletop. So with this setup that I show you in the Nomadic Toolkit, there is, um, everything's non-toxic. There is nothing that is toxic. There's pickle that you use, which is a corrosive. You don't want to take a bath in it, <laughs> but it, uh, you know, nothing in there. Liver sulfur. Yes, you shouldn't put your hands in there, but it's a natural product. It's sulfur. It smells like, you know, when you walk into an area that smells like rotten eggs, that's liver sulfur. So, um, you know, using a lot of these elements that you'll see in the Nomadic Toolkit is such a great way to get started soldering because it's simple. It's easy. When I first started soldering, I was saying, I bought this book. This was from Indian Jeweler Supply, which no longer exists, but it's showing me the setup from, I think, 1870 to 1920, the Native American, this is the Native American Indian setup. And this is with bellows to make, you know, soldering pieces over the campfire with a bellow to make it hotter. I have been in many countries where I've seen the same setup. In fact, I'm gonna include in this film some of the silversmithing that I saw out in um, Indonesia, in Bali. That's going on right now. Some of the most beautiful filigree work is out there. And, um, you know, it was so really beautiful to see because people are just using simplistic methods. In fact, how great is this? You know, I, how great is this? The people there, you know, it was, a, it was a shop, it's an outside shop, everybody has their own table. They're pumping air into their flame with a bellow, you know, with a foot bellow. They've got a foot bellow to make your heat hotter. As we know, oxygen makes your heat hotter. So, you know, any type of a torch that we have, this is mixed with oxygen. My acetylene is mixed with oxygen. And they actually picked, they grew these trees, these berry trees, and they picked these berries from the trees and use them as flux. Now, when I have somebody contact me and say, oh, you're doing that wrong, or you're not supposed to do this here, I am 
a force because I have studied silversmithing all over the world and I'm a force just to say whatever, you know? Um, and people who are in my group, I'm, I'm a force because you can use whatever tool you wanna use. You can use whatever you wanna put on jewelry. I used to do the American Craft Council shows, the galleries and museum exhibits. And actually I just did uh, Miami Swim Week this year and you can check out, I do have a, a I have a lookbook in here with Miami, but some of the pieces were so big and long, you know, you could confuse them as clothing jewelry. Why not? I love adornment. So think about who you are. There's so many different areas of silversmithing. You know, a lot of people think you just learn it, you learn all the techniques, you get all the tools right, you have to build up thousands of dollars worth of tools, which maybe that comes in the future. I certainly have thousands of dollars worth of tools. But when I first started, I had a $500 kit. And I always try to keep how to get started inexpensively because when you're using raw tools and raw material, your creativity has to really come into action. You, you know, if you have limited tools, now you're working with your mind, you know, on how can I make something look like that? If you have all the tools in the world, all you have to think of is, okay, I'm gonna use this here, I'm gonna use this here, I'm gonna use this here. So, uh, wait, loss is the mother of invention? Not having something is the mother of invention. And I love that statement and I always, I, I believe that's completely true because uh, you're gonna invent, you're gonna invent things more so. Um, if you don't have the tools for it, which you know that that's what you do You get your work to look more and more like yourself. I'm loving some of the work that's out there now You know with casting with bronzes with coppers So when you go into your studio, I'm the person who wants to encourage you to do your own setup without checking in with that Yeah, check check in with everyone see what they're using you know take workshops from different teachers, see what you like. But in the end, you give yourself peace and quiet and you go into your studio and you invent. So when you're doing your authentic work, when you're really exploring and trying something different and really getting into your passion of developing a line or trying a different technique and you're feeling this beautiful flow, that's exactly what you need to be able to get into your real work and important work. Artists are the heartbeat of the world. And when you're in there creating your real work, you, it's, it's, it will be inspiring for the world. The world needs to be inspired. As artists, we're important. The world needs to be inspired. So I do wanna say when I was uh, walking around the world and you know wrote this book, Making Connections years ago, is this jewelry? People would question is that jewelry right my studies were my background and my studies were all on um i studied pieces around the world and mostly like shaman pieces and talisman pieces so when i came back home i built a lot of these pieces when i would travel i'd come back and i'd build uh me as an american what is my talisman what is my work and in fact this is my body of work that i'm doing again is talisman work but for me it's gonna look completely different because I've changed so much and it's, you know, 35 years later. So I'm really excited as I'm building this new body of work to try not to hold on to what I built in the past, but to move forward in a brand new language of where my life is right now. So that's some of the work. Like if you're brand new and you're expressing yourself um, with your work, then you actually kind of have a fresh voice and you can get in there and explore and stop yourself when you, you know, stop yourself when you get, find this flow that's rolling along and it feels so good. But, you know, for me, what I had to do because I've been doing jewelry for so long is undo from my old work. This was fabulous. This was wonderful. I love this work. This, I walked around in the world and I just looked at architecture and I brought it back into the silversmithing world. So think about what could, you do what could you do that's in your field whether you have been a doctor in your past a therapist a um you know whether you've helped work with people there's some skills that you have that you're going to bring into your your silversmithing work and it's going to be amazing and you're going to be the only person 
who has these qualities and can bring them in. So this is why it's important because then you'll be able to magnify when you love it and have passion and bring in the people because like attracts like. So the other book that I was talking about that I loved, this book is called Legacy. I bought myself this, um, this is Jewelry Techniques of West Africa by Matthew Shami and it's Legacy. And Tim McRae is the publisher who, he was a professor and wrote a lot of the books on silversmithing, like the real technical. When you go to the university for silversmithing, you are learning like the heat temperatures, you're learning so much of the technical behind the scenes, you know, which is so good for some people, but sometimes it starts to get you in a box. When I went to art school, you learn so much of the technical behind creating that it gets you into a box. And one of the best things that you can do after you finish your degree is just to get out and spread out in the world. And that's what I did. So this one is by a French man who went around all over West Africa and East Africa. And he, because he had been looking at all of these magnificent silversmithing pieces that came from these areas, you know, just full of symbolism and full of very sophisticated techniques and symbolism. And he was watching their particular setups in their studio, how they were working. Some people were sitting on the ground. Some people were holding things with their feet. Some people were, you know, using all their tools and skills with their hands. Some of them had four tools. There's one man in here who did this amazing forging work. He had one hammer and it was passed down three generations and he literally soaked the wooden handle. He soaked his hammer in water every night. So the wooden, so the wood was swollen. So when he came in, his hammer would stay in place. I don't know if you guys have ever had a hammer where you love it and you're working it and then it just gets loose, you know? What are you gonna do? We maybe put a little glue in there, but um, you know, in this case, it's like you just have a few pieces of tools. So how will you work your tools? For me, there's so many new ways. I've been silversmithing for so long that there's so many new tools and usually I just stick with what I know and what I love and bring in different techniques. So, you know, instead of relearning tools, really, I mean, you know, I love using solder pallions. Yeah, there's wires, there's, you know, a lot of different solder ways to solder, even with the paste now, you know, which are great, but um, it's good, it's good. Like you can, when you kind of stick with the same tools, now you can focus on techniques and getting techniques down. When your brain is just out there hopping around, looking at, oh, this tool, that tool, this tool, your, your studio looks great, but you're not really getting inside your studio, right? So I'm here to ask you to drop all of the, um, the distractions and get into your studio two to three days a week, make a commitment, and uh, you know, you'll, be, you'll be in a good place. You'll find yourself, you'll find your work developing, you'll find your style developing, you'll find people looking for you, you'll find you'll be able to raise your prices, your, your, your body of work will look very similar, you know, so people can start to recognize your work. So that's kind of at the core of it, is talking about tools and just different inspirational books. I put in here some photos. Um, from my, you know, I actually, like I said, I traveled, oh my gosh, all over the world. But today I thought I'd just put in a few photos from Indonesia and Uba. There's a lot of silversmithing going on there and they're using bellows and things like that. So enjoy these photos of just these raw places. And look, when anyone says to me, you're not using the right torch, I love when people say that to me because it's my personal preference. I've had beautiful work that comes out of it. Beautiful work. If you have beautiful work that comes out of it, it's so interesting when someone says, you're not using the right torch, right?
guys, I want to remind you guys I've got gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous gems on my website. This is what I build with. And they're so ethically sourced and cut in India. And I've got them at such a good price. And I put them together in collections, you guys will see. They're put together in collections. So um, you don't have to spend like so much money just on a honey quartz or on, you know, uh, tourmaline or anything like that. So these are all put together in little collections. I think you guys will like it. They're well-priced and they're beautiful. Woo, you guys, I am finding my passion. Why do earrings do it for me? I don't know. But man, oh man, oh man, oh man, I am so, and, and these earrings are the most exciting. I couldn't wait. I don't know what it is about them. I think it's something of the hinges and the leaves and the movement and the colors. You know, I was talking about building a new body of work and how to, and there is another video on that, but how do you get there? You have to go through your old body of work to get there. So this is, I love this symbolism. This is my Polish, there's a sign on here for abundance. This one right here, abundance. And that's on my family crest. I love the pink colors, what heart openers and the little prayer boxes and the stones and just the feathers and the leaves. So, you know, for me, it's like something about them. You just have to go with your intuition. I know there's something about these earrings that are telling me this is a new direction. And this was so much fun building these. I mean, I build all the components. So in here, you're gonna find some assembly work. That's really fun. I wanted to just show some wire assembly work. So that's what you'll find in here, inside here. And you guys, you know what, for me, see this one right here? These colors, the light is really bad in here today. It's about to storm. These colors are, I'll show you guys the pictures of them afterwards, but these colors are so new for me. I'm usually doing the blues. If you look at these colors, they're fun. They're like a party. They're like bubble gum. I'm so excited. This is a new color for me. It's all the little stuff. You know what I mean? When I, when I talk about building a body of work or, you know, I'm showing you assembly. So a lot of times what I do is I'll go in my studio and I'll just make a whole bunch of, um, I'll make a whole bunch of pieces that um, are, you know, a bunch of bezels I'll have, and then I can pick and choose from them. So here right now, the pieces I have left, I'll show you some pieces that I have left. I'll bring you over here. My studio is dark, but uh, these, hopefully you could see them. All these different colors. Look at all those pinks. I've got an orange here. So I've, I've got these two colors going together. Maybe these, all the orange and pink. So sometimes it's color that really inspires a person. Let's see if this, okay, let's get it lit up a little bit more. I don't have my big light on. It's gonna storm. So those are really pretty for me. I know I like to show you guys all, um, you know, all, just all the work I'm doing behind the scenes. So you guys can see assembling in here. So check it out and enjoy. Okay, here's what I'm working on. Sorry about my mess here. Oh my gosh. I always, I'm sure you guys do too. I'm still working with these. So here's my bubblegum colors. Where's my piece that I loved? I've got this one here. Up. Oh, I probably threw it into this mess here. Where is it? could do smaller ones. All right, and then I've got these to go down here. I'm just gonna do a little simple. So it's like for me, you know, I talk a lot about spacing out pieces. So, you know, these I want to be really close. You know, I could have it all the way up here and have two pieces close, but see this little sequencing here? I'll bring you over a little closer. This is my sequencing that I like to do. Everybody has their own. Is that clear enough right there? Okay, so I like putting two pieces together, having a single one and putting two pieces together. I love playing with little flat gems, you know, and then into the shiny ones. These are fossils that I brought home from Morocco. How perfect to put with these sets. That's what excites me is like, you know, having matte along with the super shiny. And you guys, I haven't told you guys in a while, I have all these beautiful, gems on my website if you guys are building and looking for gems okay here's the little mess so but 
I love the way this is going. Oops. Okay. I think what I have to do, let me see if these two will work. Yep. I'm going to flip it this way. Okay. So, uh, these I soldered. I soldered in different batches for different reasons. It makes a big difference if I have one, I have one, uh, shank or you know the shank go in this direction and one this direction sometimes i do that because i do like to do a lot of twists with this so i'm going to use a twisted wire remember i showed you guys how to make that this can be a nice twisted wire it's a 24 gauge twisted wire don't mind anything over on this side that's all just pushed aside to not make a mess this is the torch i use that i've had for so many years just to draw a bead with because it's quick it's right here, and I'm just gonna draw a bead just a little bit. See? This one, I can hold things like this with my hand. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just a nice little, both of these, I like having a nice little twist here. So I'm gonna bring up, nice little knot there. So I'm gonna bring this one up here bring out my needle nose pliers and I hold it right in between here like this. Bring this up and then I just wrap this around. Make it nice and beautiful. I don't want to keep, I don't want a lot of room right here. So actually I think what I'm going to do is just, since I want the shortest amount of room as possible, I'm just gonna cut off about an inch and a half. So usually what I do if I'm making earrings, I wanna make sure they're the same height. So I'm just gonna go in here and do the same thing here. Okay. Oh, there's a lot of things I love. You know, one of my favorite subjects is talking about, oh, that's a little bit too much. One of my favorites is talking about assembly because assembly is the biggest part of your final design, you know, like balance. This is where your art comes in. When I talk about us as artists, there's, there's something to be a silversmith. I like making silversmithing, you know, as, as easy as possible to get in and out of because the assembly part, the artistic part, you know, you're really in the same way painters do or sculptors do. We lead a person's eye around your work. So you're leading a person's eye. That's why I have a lot of pieces to choose from all the time, right guys? That's what I say anyway. This down here, it's just gonna be a little simple attachment and uh, I need the top for earrings. So once I get this in like this, I'm gonna dip it in the flux. Okay. I don't want it that long, but you can see my idea of where I'm going with this. Oh, it's gonna be, you know, I'm building for myself too, you guys. I talk about building your work, build for yourself. I'm like, what do I want to wear this summer? Because what I want to wear is what my people that I know want to wear also. Because like attracts like, right? Don't I say that a lot? Okay, so I'm gonna bring this over and down and bring this around. I kind of like just this nice little thick knot right here. And I'm gonna pull this little knot out. I can still put this all in the pickle, even though I f have pieces finished. You know, don't, I when I have pieces finished already, they can go back in the pickle. I just have to do a better job cleaning up again. I think what I wanna do, which I'm gonna have to put my magnifiers on for this, is Why not do something fun? It's just all these little things that matter in life, guys. Why not wind these two together? Doesn't that look nice? You know, when you look at a piece, you think all this little stuff doesn't matter, but just by winding those two pieces together, it's gonna, it definitely will make a big difference in your final work. Isn't that crazy? 
That's what I learned in art school. It's like, oh, it's all the little stuff in life, guys. And then, of course, because I'm doing earrings, you have to make sure they're going to hang exactly right. Let me see. Take off my binoculars. I've got my magnifiers on. Okay, this one has to be a lot shorter because the gem is a little bit longer. I uh, Remember how I said I like doing things that are not perfect. I'm not, you know, I'm not the one that's trying to do um, the exact same thing as the other piece because it's handmade. The thing I do want to do is make sure I go the opposite direction of my other end because then I can tie them together in the end. You guys saw how I tied that last one together. Got them tied together. So bring this up and out. Bring this piece around, why not? The other one worked out kind of perfect. This one I just have to bring around a couple times. Voila. And make sure that they're exactly where you want them to be. You know, just because they're tiny and just a piece of the whole, doesn't mean they deserve the whole show floor for themselves. So there, and I'm going to have to put everything in the pickle again and get things going. Ooh, that's going to be so pretty. I love these. And um, they're both hitting the same spot now. I had to make this one a lot shorter. See how they're going to hit exactly the same spot? Now, do I just want to do a regular jump ring? I might, because you want to think about this when you're assembling. I have a beautiful gem that's going to ca catch your eye, and this I have silver foil behind because I did not cut out the back. Normally I cut out the back, especially if I'm doing um, earrings, because it helps to make them lighter. So I think what I'm going to do is just a beautiful little jump ring, and I don't know if I need any more filigree. So I'm gonna take a 16 gauge, and go get some 16 gauge round wire. You guys can look at that for a second. This is 14, ah. I've been working with all this 24 gauge and oh my gosh, when I look at a piece of 16 gauge now, it feels like it's so large. I'm just going to show you making real quick jump rings. So you want double flush pliers. These are a little dirty <laughs> and used. Oh my gosh. There's places where you can use a dip and, and get, get a whole new surface. But anyway, did you see? I just cut the edge so it would be super flush. And then I'm going to go in with my pliers. When I think you guys, on one of the earlier ones, and I'm just going to go around. And I'm just moving it up as I go around because I'm looking to have them all the same size. I love all different kinds of jump rings. I do have a jump ring maker, but it's 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 not necessary. Remember, I, this, this talk is all about tools, right? So I told you guys all about tools. Back in time, I bought all kinds of different tools because I would travel and teach, you know, and I needed quicker access. I needed people to make it simple for people while they were in... Um, my workshop. So really I have more, more tools than I actually need, including a jump ringer. But what I found is that it's so much more satisfying. Every opportunity I have to put into my work is better. If this was hurting my wrist, you guys, I just do two at a time. But if it was hurting my wrist, what I would do is just lay it right here. Watch this and lean into it. And it doesn't hurt my wrist at all. Le just lean into it like this. That's it. See? There's some nice little jump rings. Now, when I pick up a jump ring, because I need two of them, I burnt myself a little bit earlier. That's, I think I showed you guys my beautiful aloe vera plant in here. Yay for the aloe vera. It's so practical and it gives out a lot of oxygen at the same time. So to me, it's win-win. We need uh, the oxygen. Now, you know what? This is just going to actually, I, I like the idea of a nice, simple, simple, nice and simple, simple. Now, how did I put these in? I don't have to have, since I'm using a 16 gauge, I don't have to have um, this 
soldered shut. I could, if I did want to solder it shut, I would solder it shut with an extra easy. And I'm gonna check my jump ring too, grab me another one. My hands get so dirty. Just from clean, mostly cleaning. I'm always cleaning jewelry all day. Okay, looks like I need a little. Some of the ends are pinched sometimes. So if there's a little pinched edge, like this one here. Just the tiniest of snips will get me in good shape. I'm gonna love these. I usually like to put some good energy into pieces. I'll, I'll go out and I'll, I make sure that I try pieces on and I wear them so they're fitting right. They're gonna do people right. And then I'll polish them up. And when I put them in the bag to sell them, then I make sure they're alcohol and they're all cleaned up. Look at how gorgeous, you guys. I'm gonna show you this in a minute. This is gonna be the next, can you guys see that? Yeah, and then this piece here will be the next set that I'm gonna to put together. And I'll show you them both at the end. Hey there. So I wound up some more wire for myself. I'm one of the other studio visits. I show you how to make twisted wire. So much fun. So here's the two different gauges. This one actually is a 24 gauge that I, I put two together. So actually it's much more than a 24 gauge, but I love working with this one with earrings. I'll even work with the 26 gauge with earrings. This is a 22 gauge with earrings. So you can see the difference. And I know I have a see if I have that on hand. I usually don't use the 26 gauge unless I do a lot of wraps with it. It's not one of the most, you know, it's not the strongest, but it certainly is beautiful doing those little ones. So I'm gonna use the, um, this one caught at the last minute. You know, when it, if you ever are working this and it gets all raveled up at the last minute, well, this actually works out well because all you have to do is anneal it and patience and I'll eventually get this little mess untwisted. But see, really is just studio days. As many, much as I've been doing this in my studio and for this long, still things like this happen. You know, I try not to get distracted, but it happens. How did I do it? I can't remember. And I just actually finished it. But see, this will be easy. Then I'll just be able to run my pliers. When you get a twisted mess like this, you look for, these are good you know, just for flat nose pliers. If you have the nylon pliers, it's even better. Do I have a pair of nylon? Kind of a little crappy pair here, but I do have a pair of nylon that'll work well. So if you run these on through the nylon, right up against your body, get it nice and tight. This'll help really straighten up your wire without damaging it. So you get a nice straight wire again. Nylon. Hey, you guys. Tell me if you love or hate looking at the real mess. <laughs> I certainly could make it a lot cleaner in here. It's just that I'm working here. You know what, if I tried to make it cleaner in here, I'd have to be back and um, clean it up. And you know, I like just doing these little simple films like this because you guys can see my mess. Let me know in the comments if you guys are good with my mess or if you, <laughs> if you want to see it cleaner. Okay, you guys now remember how I talked about my formula and how I'm assembling. Let me move these over a little bit. I really want to incorporate these leaves in somewhere, but I haven't found the place yet. Ooh, and then if I would be so bold as to add this beautiful lapis lazuli down at the bottom. These are not gonna be in it. This, I want to maybe add a hollow form in here, but I'm not going to. Here's these leaves, I'm not gonna do this. I think what I wanna do is just wear, you know, wear a pair that I can, um, you know, that are just nice and long and drip on my shoulders. Nothing better in this summer than to have nice drippy ears. Remember, this is the non-pickling flux. So if I dip it back in there, look at how beautiful, you know, I, I actually really don't get fire scale. These are gonna be pretty close together. So I'm just gonna cut them like this. That's an, only an inch. And I didn't let it fire very long. And 
You know, you might note that I'm even using my hands for this. For pieces like this, sometimes I use my hands, but you have to hold it upside down or I'd show you guys sideways because then it draws a bead on it. There you go, see? Nice and clean. Okay, so these are the components that I get together. I'm gonna do two more for under here. And then I think what I'm gonna do, oh, I know what I'm gonna do. Okay, let's do two more of these. This is for the next row. Always good to plan ahead. This is for this row. I think what I'm gonna do between these two is make a little paddle in here. There's a lot of construction going on. You guys know I'm getting a new studio built so in here. And it's progressing along. I was hoping it would be done by my October uh, workshop, but I think it's gonna be more like November, December. So when I invite people for my personal workshops, you guys, I do have personal workshops here in my studio. Oh my gosh, we're doing inc something incredible in September. If you'd like to join me, pop onto my website to see. It's, um, it, oh, look, and it's still even too long here. I think I'm going to cut. I'll have to use this for something else. It's just a little bit too long. I really want this to be nice and short. Yeah, I have a workshop in a five-day workshop for someone who wants to really get into some details. And then I've got a three-day workshop in October. See how I'm? my pliers are a heat sink. See how I have the two gems right here? How am I doing this? putting a torch up next to it, you never point at your gems. You always point away from your gems and I'm just gonna follow it up. And as soon as I get, you know, I'm very gently holding onto my gems. As soon as this gets up high enough, I'm gonna plunge it. And that, my pliers worked as a heat sink. So my gems did not get disturbed and here I'll, I'll show you second that motion isn't that gorgeous you could see right through to the other side these i cut out the back for beautiful okay now i've got this measurement here so i just start right from the beginning i see i'm glad i cut off that extra bit so let's cut this bit off even though this one is probably longer you know the earring is longer so i have to make sure and this one's tiny. So I really have to make sure, I might cut off a little bit more. This one can easily be too long. Okay, get in with my pliers, use them as a heat sink right here, onto my gems, bring this up close. Watch how quick I am with this. You just have to be quick with it. Can you guys see? And really, I'm not putting the gem in the water to quench. I am only putting, ah, this one could have gone a little bit longer, but this one actually is, is a little bit longer. Well, this one's a little bit longer. So now see how it's a little bit longer here? That means I'm gonna have to make it up in the length right here, okay? So I'm actually going to, I have to get these in here to draw a bead for the next step. I'm gonna do a paddle in here and I'll show you how. Okay, this one, I'm doing a paddle. Uh, I'm just gonna use my needle nose with this and a little bit of assembly. I want a nice one. I want a nice one because I am going to hammer this flat. I'm gonna hammer that flat and I'm gonna pull another piece through it. So let me get this piece. Sometimes I finish a whole piece. Sometimes I'm not just working on one piece at a time, but you know, uh, I mean with earrings. Sometimes I'll finish one whole earring and then go back in and do the other one. Although it's such a bummer to go back in again and do it because I that's why I do them both at the same time if I can. <laughs> Whoops, this one might be longer. <laughs> See how this one is going to be longer and longer? This one's shorter. So I'm gonna actually draw more of a bead on here. My risk when you have to make up and draw more of a bead on here is that I could, this whole bead could fall off. 
doesn't like to be heated up very many times. Voila. Goes quick, so you just have to catch it. Okay. In the studio. Whoo, looking good, guys. Okay, I'm going to bring over my anvil. I really don't hammer here because this is not too stable. It's just a pull out. But just so you guys can see, I'm going to hammer this nice and flat. See what I mean? Let me get it up on here. Can you guys see from here? No. Now you guys will just have to trust. Trust the process. See, I just hammered this flat. That's all I did. Now with my other one, see how much room? This is how you turn wire into sheet metal, exactly this way. So in my book that I wrote, Making Connections, I talk about how to turn, you know, how to work with sheet metal and how to work with wire. And they have different properties. So the way sometimes you can work with, um, with your wire is to turn it into sheet metal. So this is one of the ways you can do that. I'm gonna drill a hole through here and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do next. Okay, this is a little tip. Sometimes when you are drilling, you, you know, something so fine like this, I have to use the tiniest drill bit, a 62. But what helps you out is if you could put a little mark on here, because sometimes the drill, see that tiny little mark, that's gonna be enough to drill. So sometimes the drill will take it and wanna twist this all around and before you know it, your piece is completely twisted and you've ruined your piece of jewelry. Okay, cut two pieces, about an inch and a half. These, I don't wanna keep very long because I've already got some length. You guys will see how beautiful this is. This is just with drawing a bead, different ways of drawing a bead for attachment. I have a whole chapter like that. And then I can't wait to get started on this other piece that I'm doing, oh my gosh. Okay, hang on. Oops, nope, I need these bigger. Okay, so that means this one, didn't I have this drilled? Let me see where this is drilled. Here's my hole, got you. Okay, there we go. Now I need a really big bead drawn over here because I don't want that much length, but this one has a large hole. Voila. This one was almost the whole length, but look, you can keep drawing your bead. You just have to be careful. Voila. See, I'm looking for a little bit of length. So, you know, when you're building your piece, think about it. Uh, you know, when you're building your artwork, if I put three pieces all on top of each other like this, yes, it would look good, but you can't, you know, it's going to look better if I give myself a little bit of breathing room. So these three do look good together, but I'd have to have a big space and put these below. Now that I have this space, I can put these two close together. Maybe I'll do like this. So you can see the difference. There's a number of different ways that you can put your design element. They're both going to look great. I decided to go for this one right here. Oh, I put these on the bottom. I'm going to have to cut some of those off. But yeah, instead of, I kind of like this long silhouette at the top. This is right where it goes past your neck. You know, so really it's like we have a mirror by us because we're used to going in and making sure the lengths are good and things like that. So I'm gonna like this one here. So instead, this is gonna go here. So I have to keep this one short too. And then this might go here. And these are gonna sit all the way down here by themselves. All right, I'm gonna finish building. You can stay if you want. This one is here. and then I'll show a beautiful photo of it. Okay. 
That's what I want. Okay. I used my pliers this time for the heat sink. This gives me some nice definition. Voila, they're get there. This one is still a little bit longer, so I have to make it up. I do have to make this up. All right, so these I could decide what type of an attachment I want with these. That one's going to be longer, this one's shorter. Then we'll have these long ones here. I think I'm going to do a little wrap on the bottom here. And let me cut these off. I accidentally put these on here. I could put some. I could put some little bells on the end. I do have little bells. I'll have to get these polished up. My these tools are a little bit. Okay. Okay, so remember the jump rings? I could use the jump ring right here. I might use a jump ring down here because that helps to give my pieces down here swing, you know, with a wire in between it. So you guys are going to see. This is going to be a surprise. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing now. Ta-da, you guys. Look how clean. I actually just scrubbed the back and the front of this, even though it gets yellow and dirty so much. I can see easier. I still have all my solders on the corner, but that's kind of nice, so I like that. Now, I wanted to show you guys, it's like, oh my gosh, this is such a different color for me. I started, you know, I was talking about how I love these little, um, hi, <laughs> how I love these fibers. I'm doing a whole different color in the fibers, so I'm really excited about it. Uh, because I don't do these kind of bubblegum colors. That's new me. Oops, I'm showing you in the wrong place. This is new me. These symbols here, I did, and um, let's see if we can hold this. I did these here, and I just polished them up beautifully. You know, in talking about the shapes, I love this fan shape. Sometimes I use it either upside down or this way, but this is going to be nice. I'm really excited about this pair right here.